Hey guys, Josh here from Electric Scooter Insider and we have another unboxing for you. This time we have the Kugo G2 Pro. So let's jump right in. As always, let's crack it open. Okay, here we go. Okay, that's the Kugo G2 Pro out of the box. I have to say, I haven't reviewed any Kugo scooters before, so I didn't really know what to expect, but the build quality feels quite good. It feels quite nice and sturdy, and I really like the tread on the tires. It almost covers the entire surface area, so it's gonna be good for kind of all terrain, but We'll see how it gets on in our full review. But anyway, let's put it together. Again, with most performance scooters, super simple to assemble. All you have to do is attach the handlebars to the stem and then tighten a few things like this headlight here. So let's jump in and let's do that real quick. Okay, now let's move on to talking about the scooter. As always, we'll start at the top and work our way down. So, on either side of the handlebars, you have rubber hand grips. Initial thoughts on these are, they seem a little bit short. I like to see them a little bit longer and also a little bit thicker with kind of an ergonomic design that's gonna allow you to rest your palms on the scooter. But then again, this scooter does only reach around 28 to 31 miles per hour. It only has an 800 watt motor, 48 volts. So it's not the fastest scooter. So the hand grips should be fine for the power on offer. But there is a silver lining. Again, on either side of the handlebars, you're going to find your brake levers. Now on these brake levers, they're actually coated with rubber. So it's actually gonna give you a bit better grip than on other brake levers that we've tested in the past. I haven't seen this on any of the scooters that we've reviewed, but it looks good and it feels good too. Next, moving on, on the left side, you're gonna find the controls for your electronic brake and your headlight. Now the scooter isn't powered on currently, but the headlight still works. And you can see the side lights work there. Oh wow, they're pretty cool. All right. We've got a little disco going on here. I didn't know that. Good, it keeps on going. Come on, let's party. It looks good, that looks cool. Right, we'll talk about that a bit more when we come to the deck. You might want to cover your ears. This is going to be pretty loud. Pedestrians are going to hear you, so it's good for that. It's probably not loud enough for cars, but then again, not a lot of the horns on electric scooters are, except for the likes of, say, your Wolf King, Wolf Warrior, Visa 11, with those scooters having motorcycle grade horns. Next to the buttons for your electronic horn and your lights, you're going to find the controls to turn your scooter on and flick through the modes which brings me nicely onto the integrated LED display. Now, the display has a very good size to it. It's very well lit 
and from my initial toying around with the scooter it does look like it holds quite a lot of information so we're all good there moving our way to the right hand side of the handlebars you're going to find the thumb throttle now the thumb throttle in my opinion is the best type of throttle it's a lot more ergonomic and easy to use that's the handlebars done so let's move our way down the stem but before we do that you're going to notice that all the wires here are bunched into this nice cabling. I'm a big fan of that. It keeps it all nice and neat, so you're not gonna get anything caught while you're riding. So that's another plus for this scooter. The only area for improvement is that if the stem and the handlebars would lock into the deck, it would make the scooter a lot more portable, but they don't lock in, so you're just gonna have to lift it like this. So it's not gonna be a great portable option, but if you just need something to get from A to B, or you just wanna have fun riding on a scooter, then maybe the Kugo G2 Pro could be the right one for you. Now let's talk about the stem. It has this nice matte finish. It feels nice and durable. And then we have the Kugo G2 Pro logo written down the stem as well. Moving our way up to the bottom of the stem where it connects to the neck, we have the folding mechanism. And this is where this little device comes into play. So all you need to do is bring the stem up at some force as well because you want it to sit flush against this mechanism here. And here is where the locking mechanism comes into play. So what you're gonna to need to do is hold this section still and upright because it fits into two grooves that are at the front of the stem and then just thread the screw in and tighten it. This folding mechanism is not as smooth as on other scooters, but because we've already mentioned that the stem doesn't lock into the deck, it's not a very portable scooter anyway. So it shouldn't impact you too much if you're just gonna keep this for sort of a ride along at weekends or you don't need to be able to pick it up and carry it. So there we go, it is a simple process, but it does take a little bit longer than other folding mechanisms. Now let's get the stem down and we'll carry on the unboxing. Great. <laughs> okay, that's the folding mechanism out. Now let's bring the stem down. As you can see, the stem is quite stiff already. I'm putting quite a lot of pressure on that. So you just need to give it a good whack. There we go. Okay, we have the stem down. Now let's move on to the headlight. Now we've already touched on the headlight a little bit. I like the placement of it here. We should applaud and praise Kugo because they've given us a nice headlight. It's got a good placement above the front wheel. More often than not, a lot of electric scooters cheap out on the headlights and they need to give you button lights in the front and the rear and then don't fit a headlight at all. But for the price point of the G2 Pro, which sits around the $990 mark in the US and then around 720 pounds in the UK, the headlight is pretty good. So that's another tick in favor of the G2 Pro. Moving our way further down, we have this skeletal like frame, which is the neck of the scooter and the swing arm suspension, plus your big, beefy, 10 inch airfield tire. Now let's start on the swing arm suspension first. Within this section here, I believe there is a combination of a spring and rubber suspension system, but because I haven't taken this scooter out for a test ride just yet, I can't give you an idea of what it's gonna be like to ride, but subscribe to the channel and you'll see our full review of that coming out very soon. Let's draw our attention to the tires. Now there's a few things that I like about these. The first one is they are air filled. They're gonna give you more dampening than solid tires. The second thing I like about these tires is that they have a good sized profile. They're 10 inches high and three inches wide. I find this profile gives you the best of both worlds when it comes to performance, but also making your ride a lot more nimble and easier to maneuver. Then the third thing that I really like about these tires is the tread. The tread almost wraps around the entirety of the tire, which is gonna make them terrain agnostic. They look more primed for street riding, but 
I think they'll do just fine on light off-road trails as well, so dirt tracks, forest paths, hiking paths, that sort of stuff. Now, let's take a look at what we have fitted on the tire to help you with your braking performance. We have dual disc brakes. We have one on the front, one on the rear. The disc brake has a nice shape to it. It has a nice finish. And you're gonna notice there's quite a lot of cutouts on it. And that's not just for design. Sure, it looks cool, but it is gonna help with braking performance. And here's why. Disc brakes can get very hot when used regularly. So those holes and shapes that have been punched through them actually help to dissipate heat and make sure that the brakes run as efficiently as possible to give you the best braking performance at all times. Swiftly moving on, we have the deck. Now the top of the deck is covered in this hard rubber material, feels nice to the touch. And then we have the kick plate at the rear. I'm a big fan of kick plates. If you've seen any of my other videos, I always talk about how they help to increase your control and stability over your riding. And that mainly comes as a result of the stance that these afford. They allow you to place your back foot on the kick plate, your front foot further up the deck, and then lean into the ride. And it just helps to improve your riding experience. On either side of the kick plate, there are two, what I can only describe as horns. I kind of like it. It looks pretty cool. It's a bit different. I've never seen this before. It reminds me of almost like a raging bull ready to charge. I don't think there's any other benefit to it from just an aesthetics point of view, but there you go. A little bit different from any of the other scooters that I've reviewed. And of course, this overview of the deck wouldn't be complete without taking another look at the lights that it has on offer. So there we go. I do like the pattern on here. It reminds me a little bit of some of the Dualtron scooters, so maybe the Dualtron Thunder. You can control the colors of the lights on the Dualtron Thunder, change what sort of color presets you have. This isn't gonna do much for you in terms of visibility it's more of an aesthetic thing but at least it will catch the attention of other road users while we're on the topic of the strip lighting you're going to notice that there are cutouts at the front of the deck and the rear of the deck and typically this is where you would find your button lights on other scooters the kugo g2 pro doesn't have button lights here but it does have a tail light at the rear unfortunately the tail light doesn't stay on all the time it only comes on when you brake. an improvement there would be to have the tail light stay on all the time and then when you brake for it to flash okay let's turn the strip lighting off and move our way further down the scooter you have a big 10 inch airfield tire to match the one at the front but this time there is a fender you don't have a fender at the front the rear fender is the most important. It's gonna stop dirt and water from splashing up on your back. And I have to say, I'm quite impressed with the design of this. It's more of a tire hugger. So it's really hugging this rear tire in all the areas that it should be. It's not gonna flick dirt up on you. You can see that the fender comes to a stop around here, which is around halfway down the tire height. That's gonna do a brilliant job for you. And you have your disc brake on the rear tire here to match the one at the front and your swing arm suspension as well. Okay, that was the overview of the Kugo G2 Pro. Now let's take a quick look at the performance specs on offer. It has a 48 volt, 800 watt motor. That is gonna propel you up to around 28 to 31 miles per hour when it comes to top speed. In terms of range, you have a 12.5 amp hour battery in the deck. And again, that's going to give you between 28 and 31 miles of range. The scooter weighs 52 pounds. That is the equivalent to around 23.5 kilograms. And in terms of the load capacity and rider weight that it can support, that is around 287 pounds, which again is around 130 kilograms. Then in terms of overall build quality, it has a water resistance rating of IP 
54, which means that it is protected from water splashes from all angles and dust ingress. The scooter costs $999 in the US and around £720 in the UK. If you're interested in picking one of these up, I'll drop a QR code here and I'll drop a link in the description. And guys, let me know what other scooters would you like me to unbox or review? I'll do my best to get those for you. Let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, drop a like, subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.